Hey there YouTube, I got the components to start reloading the 204. Went ahead and settled on benchmark powder from Hodgins. It's an extreme powder so less temperature sensitivity around here. It can be snowing one day and then it could be summertime the next. I got some Sierra Blitz, Blitz King sorry, 32 grain and try those out. And for primers I'm using Federal 205 M primers. The die set I'm using comes from Lee. Got the bullet seeder die there. We're going to adjust that in a second. And a full length sizing die. And I trim the cases to 1.84 inches using the Wilson trimmer. Alright, so the load data I got from Hodgins for this 32 grain using the benchmark powder. It starts out at 26 grains and the maximum is 28. So I've started them off at 10% lower than the starting load until uh, increasing by two tenths of a grain increment until I get to the maximum charge and then it's increased by one tenth of a grain until we see pressure signs and then we know to back it off the uh, there's not a big difference grain wise between the starting load and the maximum load so it makes me a little nervous that's why I'm going up the one tenth of a grain so uh, we're gonna go ahead and set that bullet seating die up now okay so we get the shell holder in we got our die in up top now with most dies you're gonna Screw it in until it's touching your shell holder and then you're going to back the ram off and go another quarter turn. But not with this one. What we're going to do is we're going to take a casing and place that in our shell holder. Raise the ram. And you come down with this just until you get snug with that casing. And then you're good. I'm going to do a little demonstration here. When you set it up like that, you have oh, eighth of an inch or so clearance between the die and the shell holder. And I'm going to show you what happens if you screw it in all the way. Just for the sake of demonstration, you know, I've got a dummy casing. It's got a bullet seated in it, no primer. That's what you don't want to have happen. Right now, when we put these two side by side, you can really see the problem. Got a blown out shoulder there. So this is touching the shell holder with a quarter extra turn. This is just snug on the casing. So remember. Alright, so what you want to do is take a casing and seat the bullet just in the neck, just enough that it's being held in place. Uh, you want to make sure your primer is out because when you go to measure that with the calipers, if your primer has a a little bit of a burr on it where the firing pin hit or anything like that, that'll ruin your measurement. Alright, so we come back over here to the die. Pop our assembled cartridge in there. And ram all the way. You want to just go slow with this. When you feel a resistance, you know it's touching your bullet, you know you're not going to move it anymore where it is. I'll give a quick measure with the calipers. Alright, we got quite a ways to go. So, go a quarter turn. I'm going to measure it again. You just keep on like that until you get it set to where your coal is to satisfaction. We're going to go ahead and load a bunch of these up. Alright, so I got the cases all loaded up. Painstakingly marked the charge weight on each one of them. That way there's no mix ups. After I've at the maximum charge weight, and once I get beyond that, all those casings have a red ring drawn on them. So we'll get out tomorrow and chronograph these. It's uh, supposed to be minus 18 tomorrow. We got uh, quite a bit of snow, so uh, getting out there might not be so fun. Also, what I'm going to do is I got these Hornady 32 grains. And I got some Remington Accutip 32 grain. 
I know my gun likes these, the Hornadies will find out. Anyway, the purpose of this is to have some primers to look at that'll help me judge the maximum safe pressure. And also, uh, it'll give me a velocity to strive for. I'm thinking if my gun likes the Hornadies at, uh, say, 3,900 feet per second, and the Remingtons is shooting good groups at 3,900 feet per second in that area, it'll give me a velocity to strive for with my hand loads, and hopefully we'll see if that can translate into some good groups. Well, here we are. We're going to go and uh, do some shooting. Had to muster all that back there. Okay, so after about an hour of prep work, I got my two targets up over there. Now, turns out we're going to have to shoot from these banks up here because the snow goes from knee deep to waist deep out in the field there and out in the open. And uh, we're having problems getting the chronograph the proper height. So we decided to move over here. It involved a lot of limbing, a lot of setting and aligning everything up. I think that we're ready to try the Remingtons out. Also, we got uh, goes from sunny to overcast, sunny to overcast. So hopefully, we'll have some consistent lighting to help us get a good reading off that chronograph. All right, let's get started. Okay, we'll try to get these 32 grainers <clears throat> dialed in on that uh, little target out there. Thirty nine seventeen. Thirty nine thirty four. That's a decent little G shot group. Thirty nine thirty six. Those are the Remington thirty two grain. Yeah, stab at that can of shaving cream now. 100 yards, we get the 32 grain AccuTip from Remington. I'm just going to hold off from uh, what I got on the paper there. I'm losing light fast at winter time, so I like to get everything chronographed today. Now for the Hornadies. To be fair to the ammunition and the rifle, this snow is less than ideal. I mean, I'm resetting my bipod every shot. I have nothing to reticle my... I have nothing to level my reticle by. So bear that in mind when we get the results of the groups. Straight under the bullseye. Uh, it looks like a clover leaf underneath the bullseye. Of course, focus is messed up here. Okay, all right. So now the real work begins. I've got my hand loads here, I'm doing the maximum safe pressure test. I've got my fired Hornadies for comparison, and my fired Remingtons for comparison. This is just a primer comparison. I'm going to be looking at the head of the case and uh, paying close attention to how the bolt lifts after each shot. Also, I got the chronograph. If the velocity drops dramatically with a spike in, in uh, powder, then uh, I know we're getting into some dangerous waters there. 25.4.
again primer still has radius edges and there's no ejector marking or anything whatsoever on the head that's five shots I'm gonna take a little break. all right so I'm back the barrels not quite as cool as I'd like it to be but uh, we're losing light fast and I like the chronograph well it's not a necessity it's here and it's nice to use so I'm gonna get back on her X26.4 Seven sixty nine. Primer still looking good. Thirty nine twenty eight. Four thousand six. Okay, so that's it for out here for today. We're going to head back and crunch the numbers and stuff. Uh, now while I stopped only one tenth of a grain over maximum, despite not having a hard time with the bolt or having excessive flat primer or cratering, uh, I measured the ammo temperature and it's around 32 degrees. Now while Benchmark is an extreme powder and it doesn't vary as much as some others, it still varies. So uh, in the summertime it gets way above to worry about being on the edge of where I'm going to blow a primer or something. So. Uh, 4,062 feet per second should be plenty to work with. It's very seldom your most accurate charge is above maximum or at such high velocities. Now the Hornadies were liking them bullets real good at uh, 3,800 feet per second approximately. So we're going to see if we can match that and see where that gives us in our accuracy testing. Even though it's a different bullet, it's just ballpark. All right, first up we got the Remington AccuTip. There we go, get a nickel for comparison with the group. The average speed of a five shot group was uh, 3,873 feet per second. The group size right at uh, 0.749 inch. That's center to center. And here we have the Hornady 32 grain VMAX. Uh, again with the nickel for comparison. These ones averaged five shots again at uh, 3,818 feet per second. With the group size right at 0.364 inch center to center been comparing the primers to that of the Hornady and the Remingtons and there's nothing uh, any flatter or any more uh, cratered than the factory loads give. I don't know if you'll show on camera here, I got my hottest load today and my lowest load. Not a huge difference. Anyway, Giving the factory load seemed to be liking it somewhere between 3,800 and 3,880 feet per second. I think we're going to start playing with this region from uh, 27.4 to 28, and we'll see if that yields us good results for going the ladder test.